Welcome to another episode of Forgotten Figures where we dive into another naval edition. Now, my dad says I need to come up with a better name for it since Forgotten Figures doesn't really fit the whole naval ship kind of storyline. So if anybody has any ideas on what this series could be called, please leave them in the comments below. That being said, this is one that I just recently discovered and it is the exact level of petty that I can get behind. Now, let's bring the past into the present with the German Scuttle Fleet. World War I was supposed to be the war to end all wars. It all started when Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand, sorry, wrong picture, there we go, was assassinated by Serbian nationalists. Germany, being allied with Austria, rushed to their defense and declared war on Serbia. In Serbia's defense came Russia, thus beginning the Great War. Eventually, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, in 1918, an armistice was signed, ending the war. The weapon Germany had used to terrorize the Atlantic, their U-boats, were surrendered and confiscated. But the big battleships and destroyers were still seen as masters of the sea. And as such, a debate began over how to divide the main German high seas fleet amongst the Allied powers. On November 19th, the German high seas fleet was escorted to the rendezvous in the North Sea. Roughly 70 German warships in total were ordered to drop anchor and haul down the German flag at sunset, never to raise it again. This was a controversial command, seeing as the high seas fleet was still under German control. As negotiations continued, the German fleet was ordered to sail to Scapa Flow in the Orkney Islands between November 25th and November 27th, and by January 1919, 74 ships would anchor here to await their fate. It's documented that the Allied powers held Germany solely responsible for the First World War, and history shows us how badly the nation was punished. But the question still remained, what would be done with the German high seas fleet? Great Britain, perhaps remembering the days when their navy ruled the waters, wanted the ships scrapped in an effort to prevent other nations from gaining a superiority. The other nations wanted to add to their own navies, never mind the difficulties of incorporating foreign vessels into another's navy. In the meantime, they settled on the German fleet surrendering on June 21st, a deadline that would eventually be pushed back to June 23rd. While all of this was going on, German Admiral von Ruder decided he didn't want to see a foreign flag flying over any portion of his fleet, and schemed up a plot to scuttle or sink his own naval vessels. On the morning of June 21st, the British fleet guarding the Germans at Scapa Flow sailed for naval maneuvers. Upon seeing the British ships sailing away, von Ruder took his opportunity. For the last time, the Imperial German flag was raised on the flagship and the order was given to open all seacocks, torpedo tubes, and portholes to flood the vessels. The remaining British ships rushed to the scene to try and stop the Germans, but it was too late. Of the 74 vessels anchored at Scapa Flow, 52 were scuttled within 5 hours. The 70% loss of shipping was the greatest such loss in a single day. In comparison, the bombing of Pearl Harbor in World War II, the single worst day in American history, which saw the Pacific Fleet decimated, only had a 20% loss of shipping between vessels sunk and damaged. This event also provided the final casualties of the war, but not from any explosion or naval combat. Nine German sailors were shot and killed, while another 16 were injured in brawls with the British. Now obviously, the Allied nations were furious over this action, including the British, although a few may have let out a sigh of relief with less ships to haggle over. The operations to salvage the scuttled vessels began almost immediately, but not for the purpose of dividing them among Allied nations, but because they provided a hazard for shipping lanes. Of the 52 ships resting on the bottom of Scapa Flow, only seven were raised. Admiral von Ruder would return to Germany, resign his commission, and be celebrated as a hero. In 1979, the British would eventually recognize the importance of the scuttled fleet, and Parliament would pass the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Areas Act, preventing the area from being disturbed by treasure hunters. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my YouTube channel, and don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.